All right. Hey, everybody. Sam Cole Workshop. This is Jason. We're going to take a minute. We're going to do a comparison here for you from somebody who's done both of these many, many times. Okay. If you followed my other channel, my traditional bow hunting wilderness podcast channel, you know that I had a camper there for three years, um, you know, that we used. That's how we ended up down here in Georgia. We were staying in a camper originally down here. We came down for the winters. Um, so like I said, I, I got a ton of time in the camper. I also have a ton of time in VRBOs and Airbnbs for vacations. I'm showing you some insets in here or will be down in the corners throughout. Some things throughout the thing. I'll be putting videos in here for you. But now, let's compare them. Okay, put it into realistic terms. If we spend five weekend trips a year, you do five trips, you know, five weekend getaways at 15 days total. Okay, because um, you're going to do five and you're going to basically get... Let's call it three days if you get all three. But so we got 15 days there, and then you do one week vacation of real full vacation for six days. Probably more than the average person is going to do, but let's call that that. And that's 21 days a year of vacation time. Let's say that that is going to take you 4,000 miles of total driving for that vacation time to be able to go. Whether they're just uh, some are 250 miles, you know, one way, so at 500 miles there for a weekend back and forth. Maybe do one for a thousand miles, one trip, one you know, whatever. But this is a very low number. Okay, but we're going to leave it at that. Uh, you'll probably, like I said, if you're doing this much traveling, you're probably way higher than that. But we'll keep it simple at that kind of a number. Now. With that said, let's take a comparison here between these two as we run them right down the middle and see what the differences are. Now, they're here. If you don't want to watch anymore, don't. You can just see the numbers. You don't have to wait for me to talk about it. But if you want to and you're thinking about buying a camper, you're on the fence, stick around. I'll give you some information. If you don't, there it is. Go. Do your thing. You're good. You got all the info you need. Now, buying a camper. Let's just pick one at $40,000, okay, because that's about the average of what somebody's going to pay for a, for a camper for a family, okay? We're going to call it $40,000, and uh, um, let's say you're not going to put any money down on it. You're just going to go ahead and finance it. You're going to do it for six years. Um, even though you go longer, say you're going to do it for six years at 5%, you're going to come out to $750 a month, which is going to be $9,000 a year for the actual camper. Okay, uh, it's just what it comes out to. Now, again, you can extend that out for more years. Uh, you can buy a used one for, say, 30. You know, there's options out there. But let's just be realistic here and call it an average family size, uh, 27 or 28 foot bunkhouse type travel trailer. We're not getting into, you know, fifth wheels and stuff like that. We're just talking standard you know, nice travel trailer, a good middle of the road travel trailer. Um, you're going to be right in that neighborhood. We're calling it nine grand. Insurance is going to cost you, if you get it super cheap, it's going to cost you 600 bucks a year. Okay, at 50 bucks a month. That's if you can get a super cheap deal. Gas, whatever your tow vehicle is, we're going to automatically just assume that it's a full size truck or a full size SUV or it's a full size uh, whatever. We're going to just say that you're going to be about eight miles per gallon. Okay, it could vary a little bit. Who cares? Point being, you're in, for this purposes, you're at eight miles per gallon. It means it times this many miles at three dollars a gallon for gas, you're fifteen hundred dollars. I kept the same thing, four thousand miles, three dollars per gallon for gas, but I just cut it in half because if you're getting eighteen here or eight miles per gallon here with your truck, you're probably going to get 16 uh, loaded down without that, but with toys. So, you know, the gas, we just ballparked it, all right? And then the campsite fee. A lot of people don't think about this, but campsites, if you want full hookup, uh, you want, uh, you know, to be able to run your sewers, and, you know, so you want a, uh, a full black water hookup, you want running water, and you want electricity, a full, what we call a full service site, um, full hookup site, you're doing that, they're a minimum of 60 bucks. If you can find it cheaper than that somewhere, you're, you're on to something. Because most of them are anywhere from 60 to to $100 per day. So let's say you find it at 60 and you keep going back to ones that are only $60. You do this for your 21 days. You're at $1,260 for the year for the cost of the site rental. Okay, even if you're different places and even if you can find these smoking deals, you're at that cost, okay? Um, which usually at those prices too mean that you're jammed in like sardines. But just for the purpose, we're going to say you get that. So you're at 1260 That's going to put you at $12,360 each year that you have this camper. 
Okay. Now, some people are going to say, but I get the value of the camper. No, you don't. The value of the camper is worthless. I promise you. Okay. Um, you, you, if you buy a camper for $40,000, you can use it for five years. When you turn around and sell it, it's going to be worth like $10,000. Okay. So you're losing tremendous money there. Do the math. Go look online. Research it. It's all right there for you if you think I'm lying to you. It's out there. Okay. Again, coming from somebody who owned one. Um, and I actually own three total in my life. Um, now, when we compare that to an Airbnb or a VRBO or any of that kind of stuff, $400 is what I kind of put on here for this. $400 a night. Do you know that the average cost of a VRBO rental is $126 a night? So this $400 a night will get you the ultimate lake house type setup, uh, room to sleep, tons of people we are talking very very nice places your own private beach your own access to all that i mean we are talking very very nice places here okay we're not talking run of the road and we did that on purpose to show you still even if you were to go living like a king and have like i said where you can walk right out your front door and uh just jump right into the to the beach and things like that this is the price of that it's amazing okay so you can get a lot and if you don't like this price you could go down to 200 bucks a night still live like a king and cut all these numbers in half but that's going to cost you at 400 a day times your 21 days 8400 for the year your gas is going to be 750 and there's no other expenses okay well i gotta buy food for that you gotta buy food for this well, I gotta buy, bring all my own clothes home. You gotta do all that here too. Well, I can store all that in here. Yes, you can, but you can bring it here in a suitcase too. You're only going for the most at one week anyway. Okay, so there's really no comparison on any of that stuff, but there is extras to think about. So first off, we know that we are going to save three to six thousand dollars a year, depending on how you work this number with what you're doing and what your needs are. You're going to save anywhere from three to six to even could even be eight grand a year doing Airbnbs for the same amount of time over having a camper. We also have to be concerned with storage. Where are you going to store this camper? Do you have to pay somewhere, pay them $200 or 100 bucks a month? I've done that when we were leaving our camper in Tennessee because we were traveling all over the south coming from Michigan. We would park it in Tennessee, drive down without the camper, pick it up in Tennessee, take it to anywhere we wanted to go, Alabama, Georgia, wherever, Florida, and then we would drop it back in Tennessee on our way home. But we had to pay storage for that. Do you have a place to store it at your house or where you're going to be? That might be an additional cost. Do you have a tow vehicle? big enough to tow it. When we bought our last camper, I was using a uh, 2018 F-150 with a tow rating of 7,400 pounds. You know what? My trailer, uh, my tra I don't remember exactly, but I want to say it was, well, I, I honestly don't remember. I want to say it was right around the 5,050, about 5,800 pounds dry, I think is what it was. And don't quote me on that. I don't remember for sure, but uh, it ended up being too much for that truck for towing cross country. I ended up buying a diesel, 2,500 Ram Cummins diesel. Uh, to do that. So is your tow vehicle enough or do you got to invest, you know, 50, 80, 100,000 dollars into a tow vehicle that's going to do that? Repairs and maintenance. These things break all the time. Okay. I've done videos on that. I've talked about it. You will constantly be fixing things in your camper. Okay, you go on a week-long trip and you drive it for a thousand miles, you will have light bulbs that have fallen out that you don't know where they go, things are broke, your seat cushions have all of a sudden bounced around too much that one of the pieces of one by broke. Campers are put together with just one by, you know, uh, one by one pieces of wood, staples, a couple of screws, and a little bit of glue. They're, they're, they're built very lightweight to go down the road um, to give you the lighter weight when you're towing. But they're just built like garbage, no offense, but they're pure crap. I, I, I can't emphasize that any other way. And again, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I've been there, done that. But I'm telling you that the quality of them is horrible and you will require tremendous amounts of maintenance. So that's something you got to consider. Can you do that stuff yourself? Every single trip that I have been on, which we have spent a grand total in that camper we had of about six months, eight months total time in the two and a half years we had it, spent almost eight months total in that camper and then my parents stayed in it one time for uh, 45 days and another time for 20 days. So we got, you know, 10 months of use out of that camper. And in that 10 months of use, there's not one single trip. Even if it was just going literally 20 miles from my house and setting up with a generator back in the woods somewhere boondocking for a day, there is not one single trip I ever made that I did not have to spend time working on a camper. Okay, just something to keep in mind. So are you capable of doing those repairs and maintenance yourself? Do you want to do them? Something to consider. 
Also, no toys. What do I mean by no toys? Most campers cannot haul kayaks. Most campers cannot, you can haul bicycles. You cannot usually haul dirt bikes. You're not taking a side-by-side. -side. You're not taking a fishing boat unless you buy a, uh, unless you have a uh, one that's got a fifth wheel on there. Um, so that you can a gooseneck fifth wheel because then you can tow a trailer behind it. Or you have an actual drivable RV like a Class A or Class C, then you can. But if you just got a travel trailer, you cannot take your boat with you. You cannot take any of those accessories, your jet skis, uh, your motorcycles, your four-wheeler, your ATV. None of that can go because you can only tow one trailer behind you. So you're not taking any toys. Also, there is no privacy. Tucked away here, away from everybody, nice and peaceful. We just got here about 15 minutes ago. Just got everything unhooked. And uh, so it gives you, it shows you, like I said, there is, I mean, I, I just can't get over that. Look at this place. During the busiest week of the year, busiest week of the year, and we have it all to ourselves. Nobody else around here. That's a beautiful thing. And even if there was, look at the distance between campsites. Okay, I mean, that's huge compared to these RV parks. We are in a beautiful RV park. Okay, this is an RV park, not just some of these other places that you can find when you're out there. But let me show you the difference here. If you look out here, you will see our view. We got a great spot. We back right up to the river right here. You can see a couple kids fishing down there. I've been watching him to make sure that little kid doesn't fall in, but he's down here fishing, having fun. We back right up to the river. We got the space behind us back here. This is beautiful, right? Let me show you the reality of RV parks, okay? If we come over here and we look here, Oh, look at how close my neighbor is. That's their picnic table, their setup, okay? We are right, you can see that is my power line. I am all the way to the edge, okay? I cannot be over anymore. And, uh, but you can see I have a guy right here. Those are his cars, not my car. So when I sit right here on my couch, that's my view. That's his cars, not our cars. And if you look out this side, right over here, there's our picnic table. There's another guy right there camping right there that's all the spot we got i'm doing this from inside because there's people so close i don't want to insult anybody or give anybody a hard time or make them feel bad so i'm not going out there to do it that's my truck that's where i have to park that is his camper that is my truck right on top of me you look out this bedroom window here you can see that's my bedroom window those are his cars those are those that guy's cars look at the road look across here just take a look at this everybody is jam-packed right on top of each other all the way through here it's absolutely insane okay campgrounds today sorry i know i'm sweating here it's still it's 98 degrees here in south georgia and i'm in my my garage here but uh um, you have zero privacy at campgrounds anymore. We have found a couple that took me so long to search for them that we absolutely love. I'll show you some examples in here. They're running down here for you. We have found some amazing ones. But most of them are more like this other one you're seeing where you are jammed with sardines. And not only are you jammed in as a sardine, the way campsites are set up, okay, on the... Um, discharge side of your camper, which is where your water hookups are, uh, all your hookups are there, and you have your sewer drain now, okay, that's where that goes. That's on one side. So if we take a, just do a simple little drawing here of a box, okay, like this. If this is your picnic table side of your camper where your awning is, and this is where your family lives and all this stuff, you know, I think we got this good enough. Let me clear this out so I can show you this, all right? Let's just give a little room. I think you understand what we're saying here. So let me clear that a little bit. So you have, and let me go to a different color so it makes sense. So on your camper, here is your camper, okay? This is at a campsite. Here's another camper at a campsite. Here's another camper at a campsite, okay? If most campers, you're set up so that you have your awning, and your picnic tables and your chairs and all your living space is on this side, okay, on driver's side, all right? Or say it's on the passenger side, whatever it is. But most of these, let's just say you're set up for this kind of a setup here. It would actually be passenger side, usually your tow vehicle's here. So this is your tow vehicle, your front hitch. So it's usually set up on the passenger side. So you'd be backed in or pulled through. So there it is. Here's the front of the vehicle or your tow vehicle here, okay? This is your living side, all right? So he's got it made. He's got that. Everything is perfect. Well, that means that this is your water hookup side and your sewer discharge side, okay, is all happening here. Cables out here, all that stuff is on this side. You got your slides that come out, okay, this is your slide side. This is awning, A for awning. This is your S for slide, okay, maybe you got another slide that comes out here, okay. Now, what if you're this guy, 
at the campsite. Okay, you're not him, but you're him or him. Okay, so here you are. Here's your awning. Here's your table and chairs. Here's your slide that comes out, your other slide that comes out, okay? And your sewer discharge is here, and your water hookup is here. This is your living area outside your patio. Your door is right here. What are you staring at? You are sitting here smelling and staring at his, your neighbor's draining sewer, his sewer, watching his crap flow through that bare cap right here. Your living side is just sitting there staring at his sewer and all of his black and gray water pouring through that thing right there in front of you. You're cooking food and right here when they flush the toilet you watch all their brown crap flow right through their thing and go into a tube right there and you get that smell. So like I said, camping, not as nice as you really think it is. Don't get me wrong, we loved it, but something to consider. It is not what it's all cracked up to be at the sales dealer. So if you want it, and I'm not taking anything away from it, I promise you this, some of our best memories we made as a family were done in a camper. Look around here, you can see we are not in a hotel. We do not own this house. You can see another one right over here. You can see another one over here. They're scattered down the mountain. You can see the beautiful view. I'm hoping that sun's not too harsh, but you can see the mountains here. Now, normally, there's there's other ones that have better views as well, too. There's a lot of these. What these are is these are cabins. These are through Cobbly Knob Rentals, the one we've been using. We've been using them for 20 years, uh, but you go right to CobblyKnob.com. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Uh, cobblyrentals.com but you get your own cabin now this one we're in right here is actually a three bedroom two bath you can see it's pretty good size here i'm gonna wiggle on down around this side but without falling down a hill but you get this cabin right here instead of a hotel room these cab i think this one's 125 130 dollars a night i can't remember exactly tina's the one that reserved it but most of these cabins are going to be somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks a night and they are got all the amenities that you want like i said you do have some pretty beautiful views of the places we've been over the last 20 years this one here is actually the worst view we've had uh but it's okay because of the fact that we like the amenities of the cabin but a lot of them are like sticking off this side of a mountain up there and you get just amazing views they're incredible out here uh but this like i said here you know you got some great features on this one too a nice place to sit and relax but i mean for the price of what it costs for a normal hotel room you're getting a lot of bang for your buck you get your own cabin here um which with a lot of opportunities we got our own grill not ours but it's here you know it was actually here so we can uh come here and barbecue we got a hot tub outside we got an outdoor fireplace right here, which is really nice. Uh, wood, they supply wood. This shack right here is actually all dry wood, so if we want to use it. Huge wraparound front decks on here. Plenty of places to sit. Nice covered area right off the road, you know, kind of thing. A lot of them are, you, you know, you got these mountain roads up here, but just uh, just beautiful place, nice setup. Uh, a lot of stuff working for it. I wonder if this door is even open and if I can come in this way. It is. But when you come in... Uh, we have upstairs, there's a master bedroom up there and the bathroom up there. Here we have the living room area in this one. Yep, we got a pool table right in the middle of the living room. Something that you don't see very often except for in some pretty crazy bachelor pads, but it is nice. Um, so you have that, TV, fireplace, a lot of space. Huge kitchen, so you have, it's, it's an actual house. It's not like you're stuck in a hotel room wondering what you can do. Um, you know, you got your own space everywhere, plenty of seating rooms. You know, like I said, it just gives you a lot of room to run around and, and do stuff. Little area out there in the back with a little deck on the back side. But for 100 or 125 bucks a night kind of thing for these places, um, I'm not going to show you all the bedrooms because everybody's right now getting ready. It's early in the morning. We're getting ready to roll out, so I got people in every shower. Uh, this one, like I said, is actually a three-bedroom, um, three-bedroom, two-bath setup. But as you can see, just a cute perfect little cabin but for the price of what you would pay to be stuck in some little bitty small hotel room uh you have access to to this type of a setup here and, and like i said there's a lot of these cabins they're gorgeous uh and they usually in a you know in the springtime uh and a lot of times of the year when you get them there's the one we're actually in right there if you want to see the one we're per actually staying in ourselves that is the name of it right there but these cabins um you know if you usually there's a deal that if you do like uh um, if you do three nights, you get one night free. 
okay, and you want to bring that up, mention it to them because they never tell you it's there, uh, but that deal usually exists. So every year we come down, we tell them about it and we get it. But like I said, just a great little setup, beautiful little cabin and sure beats being in a hotel room and uh, gives you all the amenities you're looking for. So we loved owning a camper. A camper was one of the best decisions we ever made. However, now with that said, I can do everything I can do in a camper plus more because of Airbnb and VRBO and rentals. I can do it all here much better, much cheaper, and in a much better scenario without having to deal with any of this stuff. I get all the privacy I want. I can bring my boat and all my toys. I don't have to repair or fix anything. I don't need a special vehicle to tow it there. I don't have to store anything at all. I can have everything I want right there and I have zero stress on it. Food for thought for you. If you already own a camper, love it. Enjoy it. We did. Uh, and, you know, ha have the time of your life. Like I said, I'm not taking anything away. But if you own one, you have to accept the reality of this. Okay, there's no denying this. And you know exactly what I'm talking about with all the stuff that we're saying here. Jammed in like sardines. Literally, this is how close your world is here. I'm, I'm not kidding with that. As again, I'm showing you examples from my own experiences right here. I'm showing all this stuff that's rolling in here. But this distance here is like literally six feet. Okay, this is your whole world. And it's got all of his crap right there. His window's right there. You got to kind of duck your head to walk through it. It's not what it's cracked up to be like you see. Now, it may be out west where you have a lot more open spaces. Might be in certain places down on the coast where you're right on the water. You get some room. But then again, this number here is going from 60 to 200 per night for camping there. Uh, and then, you, so like I said, everything is, is a trade-off. Except this, in my opinion. And as I show you here in my thoughts, there's no trade-offs here. This is the way to go. Some people, you know, I used to convince myself, well, we're making amazing memories and it's quality family time and, all, and I get all that. But I can do the same thing right here too. But then you don't get the campsite experience. I can rent a cabin as an Airbnb right at the same campsite that everybody's jammed up with. And I have my own cabin, which is bigger than my RV. And I don't have any maintenance. And I can bring my boat and my toys and we can have everything I want right there. And it costs me a bunch less money. Stuff to think about. So your choices, your decisions, your way to, to put it together, hopefully this helps you <coughs> from a realistic person that has done both, okay, have owned campers and has spent a lot of time in Airbnbs. Hopefully this gives you food for thought for what the right decision for you is. If the right decision for you is a camper, more power to you. You know, a million Americans a year go out and buy campers, and or people in the world, they buy, go buy campers. They love it, okay? I understand that. I'm not taking anything away from it. But you, the one that's on the fence trying to wonder if you want one, this video is for you. Make your decisions. It gives you some ideas to think about. Thanks for watching.